Hi there everybody, Morgan with Event Answer here and today I want to share with you how to put together some custom moss lettering. Now you can go out to any craft store and pick up cardboard or wood letters, cover them in moss and have a similar look. But today I want to delve into how to create a customized version. I love this script and word and find it really near and dear to my heart and so I want to show you how I put together this custom words and how you can do it for your own home decor or event as well. The first thing I did was find a silhouette image that I wanted to create into my moss work of art. So I chose the word inspire in this script and what I did was blow it up on my home computer and tile printed it through my printer. And then I'm just gonna cut this out and use this as a guide for cutting out my foam in a moment here. You could choose any kind of silhouetted image to turn into a piece of moss art. It could be a word, a phrase, or even an image of a dog or something that you really wanted. You just want to make sure that the lines are thick enough that they can support themselves when we cut that out of foam. I'm cutting my words out of this one inch insulation foam that I got from my hardware store. So it's one inch thick and it's sold in large panels, but I've cut this down to about two feet wide for this project. So I'm just gonna lay my image on top of the piece of foam. And then I'm just gonna use these pins to hold the image in place. Because the script is so thin and spindly, I don't want this to shift on me or twist as I'm tracing it. So I'm just gonna stick a couple pins in this to hold it nice and flat while I trace this out. I then went around all the edges with a permanent marker so I have a line to follow as I cut this out. Next I pulled the foam panel off the edge of the table so I can cut out the image. Now I'm using this electric foam cutter or a hot knife, um, but you could absolutely use a really sharp knife to cut this out as well. I found that when I was working with this tool, I always had to start a little away from my pattern because it made a really large melty hole, uh, and then gently ease up to the edge of my pattern and just work along the edge. A few tips I learned while using this hot knife is it's really important to keep the tool vertical. It's easy to tilt it slightly, but then you end up with a tilted cut. So keep it nice and straight and a really slow, consistent speed. Because uh, I found that when I went really fast or slowed down, it gave me a jagged edge as I cut. a little bit of a bevel to the front side of my words. I think this is going to help the moss fold over it a lot easier and it'll cut down the height that I've got. So I'm just using a really sharp brand new X-Acto blade here uh, and just going along all the bevels at about a 45 degree. It doesn't have to be super perfect because we're going to paint and then cover this in moss. So if it's a little jagged, a little rough around the edges, don't worry. Now I'm gonna cover it in a green base coat of paint. The moss is really airy and might have places where you can see through it and I don't want this bubblegum pink color to show through my green moss. So I'm just gonna give everything a base coat of acrylic green paint. Uh, it could be any shade you really want. This is just kind of a hunter green that I had on hand. Uh, the important thing is to just get into all the nooks and crannies of the foam that we've cut up so none of the pink shows through. I have a couple of preserved moss options laid out here. Now these first two are reindeer moss and they've been dyed in this light and this dark green color. I think I'm gonna go with this light green moss to cover mine with today. I also have this preserved forest moss. It's a little looser and chunkier in some places so I don't think this is quite gonna work for my project um, because it's an inconsistent size. Uh, but you could also use some faux ferns or succulents if you'd like to add to your project. So a couple options here, but today I'm going to go with the preserved moss. Now I do not need to water or fertilize this. This moss is not going to come back to life um, because it's already preserved. So no care is required once I get this glued down. So I've got my moss here and I'm just gonna open it up into some flatter pieces. Some of it comes kind of clumpy and I found that to make this moss stretch a little bit further, I just 
unfurled it until it was nice and flat and then laid down some hot glue either right on my foam or onto the moss itself depending on how I needed to get it to all fit together. And I'm just going to start layering this all down on my piece. The important thing is to get it as tight as possible to the form and not have any open gaps between the moss. I ended up using about three bags of this moss, but really wish I had had a fourth because as I got to the end of this project, I was scraping the bottom of the barrel to make it stretch. So make sure you buy enough moss to cover this because it does take a decent amount to cover all this surface area, not just the tops, but the sides as well. to do was make a way so I could hang this on the wall. So I'm using a couple of inches of floral wire here that I'm bending into a U shape and then bending the tips of that at a 90 degree angle. I'm going to poke the tips of that right into the back of the foam and secure it in place with a couple of dots of hot glue. This whole moss piece is really lightweight and just a couple of these floral wire hangers are going to be plenty strong enough to hang this on the wall. today's project inspirational. With just a few basic tools, you can have a work of art for your home or next event. If you enjoyed today's video, please consider subscribing. I'd love to have you join our crafting family as we delve into all kinds of party and event planning, as well as decorating and balloon projects. So if you'd like to see some other projects, you can look into these over here. And until the next time, stay creative!